Hey, welcome to the Mentor Engineer. I'm here in my new office. You can tell it's not finished yet. Uh, I don't have a window, so I don't have heat or anything, and it is about to snow in just a few minutes. So whew, it is cold out here, and I've done this like six times now, so I am getting a little cold. Anyway, so it's time to get serious here about our video this week, which is about children's book. All right, this is Gertie and Gus by Liesl Weiss, and it was written in 1977, but the message in it is true today as any other time in history. Hey, if you like what you see so far, please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe and click that notification bell so I can annoy you at least once a week. The story is like this. Gus is a bear married to Gertie and he loves to fish. And all he wants to do is go out, sit on the dock, fish, catch a fish, come back, cook it and eat it with his wife. That's heaven to him, you know, that's what he wants to do. But Gertie has other plans. Gertie takes the fish one day, goes out, sells it, buys some potatoes, cooks the potatoes, has them for dinner. Guess is a little perturbed as to why there are no, there's no fish. I like fish. Where'd my fish go that I caught? Well, anyway, after a couple days, Gertie surprises Gus with a fishing net. And now Gus can go out and catch more fish easier and faster. But remember Gus, he still likes, he wants to catch that one fish, one, two fish, and go home and cook it and eat it with his wife. Anyway, he takes the net he's thankful for, goes out, catches a bucket full of fish, comes home, has his fish with his wife, until one day, Gertie's at the, uh, at the market trying to sell the extra fish, and she's late. And he doesn't get to have dinner with his wife. So, a little upset. But anyway, it goes on, and you can see where it's going to go from this. The fish turns into fishing net, as we said. Then it turns into a fishing boat. Then he becomes the fishing captain of a fleet of ships. And meanwhile, on Gertie's side, it goes from just selling in the market to having a shop to having a restaurant. And then they buy this giant villa that they live in. And one day, Gus realizes this is not what I want to do. He writes a letter to Gertie and says, hey, I just want to fish for myself. I'm going to go do that. You know, this is one of those lessons that we need to read every year, it seems. It's only 10 minutes, so it wouldn't take long, but just to get that refreshment of what are we doing with our lives? And I'll say the first thing that we do is we tend to make our lives so much more complex than uh, what it needs to be. And part of this is our heart. It, heart. it wants certain things. It wants status. It wants money. It wants the things that money buy. I, well, I had a, uh, an issue with this back about 15 years ago. I suddenly had some extra money in my budget and I want to buy tools. Tools make me happy. Uh, well, then I needed some place to store the tools, so I bought a tool cabinet. And the tool cabinet then had empty drawers, so what am I going to do? I'll go, buy more tools! Put them in the tool cabinet. Oh, and then I ran out of space again, so I buy more tool cabinets. I have six tool cabinets to this day from that time period. Now, I'm glad tools are something I use, I love. Um, I've used practically every one of them. And a lot of those tools I bought at uh, you know, Harbor Freight or I bought them from uh, garage sales. You know, people getting rid of stuff that they had no idea. I actually got a great caliper set from that, but nerd out there. Uh, so that is uh, just the problem we have of complexity. You know, how, uh, how we can take something so simple as going and fishing and turn it into I have to have a giant bass boat to enjoy going out and fishing. Hey, if you want to do that, more power to you. I'm not telling you not to, but I'm just saying, you know, question. So one thing that gets lost in the complexity of life is the diminished time that we have. You know, when we are starting out in our careers, we seem to have more time to do the things that we love. So things are new to us at that point whether it's uh, early in our career and we love doing what our job is, or uh, getting married, falling in love, having kids, all those things are great at the beginning, but then all the stuff of life starts to creep in and we lose time. I just wanna uh, remind people that 
uh, don't do what I did for a lot of years, which was try to cram dollar conversations in dime sized slots. Uh, this is the conversations you have with your wife as you're walking out the door to go to work and it's a big topic that needs to be discussed. It needs a lot of attention, but you know, work wins and you gotta go. And you never really get around to talking about those issues. I'm not saying this has happened in the book, but um, the goals of Gus and the goals of Gertie were never, ever discussed. Gertie's goals, you know, just wanted more and more and more as we found out as the story goes on. But it doesn't seem that she ever talked about this with Gus. Everything was, was hidden in the story. You know, they were eating potatoes instead of fish. Well, why? You know, that's interesting. So, hey, um, I'm not a marriage counselor, but if you don't talk with your spouse about what you want to do and what she wants to do and how you can make those a reality and hopefully make those paths converge to something that you both want to uh, do or be a part of uh, or support the other as they're, they're doing something, uh, you're gonna have problems. I've been married for 18 years now and I know about uh, problems in my marriage. Uh, I've had quite a few and worked through them and uh, just glad that uh, we're still together and everything else. But one of the things we do is we talk about our goals, how we're feeling about things, where we want to go, where we want to be in five years. Uh, goals are very important things to have. And the reason that I think a lot of people go through a midlife crisis are they stop having goals, real goals. So if you think about it, when you start after college into your career, you got the, the career to be excited about. Maybe you fall in love, you get married, you have kids. And all of a sudden, all those things are kind of, well, I've done that, you know, is this all that life is? I go to work, I have kids, I spend time with, you know, and the and life gets in the way of, um, you know, somewhat being happy, I'll say. And uh, what happens is for a lot of people, they stop having goals. They, they haven't written down goals in, in 10 years of things they wanna do, wanna learn. Uh, goals are great tools to stretch yourself, to get you to do things that aren't easy. And we need to be stretched as people. It's just who we are. Um, we, we are not made to do the same thing monotonously uh, day in and day out. Yes, there are certain people who can do that, but by and large, most people you know, do that job and then they go home and then they have their hobby that they love or something like that. So make sure you have a goal, make sure that you're trying and learning new things all the time. My final point here is just to get that complexity out, to live simply, inventory your life from time to time and find out are things bringing you happiness? Or are they bringing you misery and frustration and you, you couldn't care less whether you did them or you didn't? Is there a way to eliminate or minimize those? Uh, if your work life is not something you wanna do, you know, we change over time to say that, you know, when I graduated at 20 years old, uh, 20, 25, whatever, by the time you get out of college and you work for 40 years, do you still wanna do the same thing at 20 that you did at 65? For most people, it's not. And that's why careers change over that time. And what I would recommend to you is, you know, Take inventory of what you're doing with your time. Um, do you want to climb the next rung on the corporate ladder? Because every rung usually requires more of your time and energy and usually takes away from being with family. Um, I've heard it said this way, and I, I love this saying, is many people climb the corporate ladder only to find that it's leaning against the wrong building. So don't be one of those people Hey, uh, I also want to uh, put up at the top of the screen here a, a link to a video with Steve Harvey telling you if you need that extra motivation to do something drastic in your life to get from where you are now to where you want to be, what you want to do, uh, whether and if it's just a hard thing to do, Steve Harvey here tells you to jump. Hey, thanks for watching The Mentored Engineer here. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Thank you for watching.